Hey everyone, in this, we're gonna continue on with the, the sales and operations planning area here where we're gonna move in that area and talk about reviewing the aggregate supply plan. Now, when we talk about supply, we're talking about certainly our suppliers, but at the same time, we're talking about uh, our internal capabilities too. So when we look at this area, we want to make sure we do a couple things here. We review the supply base, who our suppliers are, what the capacities are, what are any risks. Fundamentally, from a supplier standpoint, we want to know what the market space looks like for the, the suppliers that we're looking at that commodity for or product, as well as who the key players are. So, you know, to meet the needs of our own supply chain, we got to have a supply base that can successfully need, meet the needs of our supply chain. And that means that the type of supplier, how they operate, size, capabilities, capacities, way they operate, they too have to be in alignment with and supportive of what we're trying to accomplish as a supply chain and as an organization. Now, whether our suppliers are in alignment or not, we also need to evaluate them for any and all future potential risks. So we have plans in place to respond to risk events. Now, all of these are important because we're only as good as our supply base. We need to make sure our supply base is robust for us and capable as well. And impact wise, whether they're capable or not, is gonna hit is, or it could be problematic or successful in whether or not we hit our needs. Now, taking that same conversation with suppliers a little bit further, coming internally, it's the exact same issue. We gotta look at our own supply kit capacities in terms of machines, work center, people resources, toolings, inventory status, uh, targets of inventory. So everything we talked about above um, applies to what we're talking about. And as well, where we talked about new product introductions before, I would say we also want to look at those product life cycles again, new product introductions, obsolescence like we did before. They apply with the suppliers and internally as well um, when we look at those issues in the conversation. So we not only look at them from a products and product life cycle and everything else out to the customer, we have to do thing in do the same thing internally because how well we manage that affects how well we're going to be able to build our products.